Hi, this is Manmad. Welcome back to my channel. Now today's topic is proper handling of IK frozen shrimps. Even when shrimps are freshly harvested and caught, brought back to the manufacturing facility and frozen in a good conditioned freezers, their quality can be still be degraded by poor handling. Yes, from raw material to freezing, we have maintained good cold chain. But after freezing, it is very important. After freezing, handling of shrimps will play the crucial role. One of the most consistently overlooked faulty practices is after freezing the shrimps packed in a packaging material, primary, secondary, and not moving to the cold storage. In the packing store only, the pallet until assembling of the full pallet or after assembling the pallet also it remains maybe half an hour or one hour in the packaging area or in the anteroom which degrade the quality of the shrimps as per the study says after packing the shrimps ik frozen shrimps in the packaging material and the room temperature if room temperature is plus 10 and the pallet remains one hour in the packaging store area or anteroom at plus 10 degrees centigrade. Outer layer of the master cotton will start melt. Room, whereas at a room temperature of plus 20 degrees centigrade in the packaging middle room section, if you keep the uh, frozen products for more than half an hour, also leads to the melting of surface of the slabs in the master cotton outer layer of the master cotton gets start melt then after one hour or 45 minutes you will shift to the cold storage so partly melted surface of the shrimps will form recrystallization it will take 48 hours if your cold storage is maintaining at minus 20 or below the shrimps on outside of the first layer of the pallet starts defrost. Our online QC report says, yes, hard frozen, appearance is good, no clumps after I kept freezing. Then the next day or the coming next day, when you inspect the finished product, lot wedge inspection, you can observe more clumps in the product and ice powder you can observe in the pouches. How this will happen? Yesterday or day before yesterday, as per the online QC report says, good quality, good frozen shrimps, good appearance. But within one, two days, the shrimps color also changes. So how to prevent freezer burn or dehydration after IK frozen and hardening with adequate glaze, either cooked IK frozen or raw IK frozen shrimps? Handling is very important will play the very key role to prevent the freezer burn and dehydration. So what are the subsequent steps after IK frozen shrimps? After IK frozen shrimps are packed in a packaging material, primary packaging material and secondary packaging material. The next step is after packing in the packaging material, then the shrimps has to ship to the cold storage warehouse. The next step is after certain so after some days again we have to load or ship the cargo into the container then finally unloading and warehouse distribution at any destination so these are the steps the chances of freezer burn takes place how can we prevent so step one step two step three we can prevent step four it depends upon the destination importers are distributors okay now we will discuss about the packaging material after IK frozen the first step is packaging material quality and packing method so what is the packaging material quality the criteria so we have to select the right packaging material for right products HDPE high density polyethylene with thickness ranges from GSM means 200 GSM or 250 GSM or from 150 to 250 GSM 
grams per square meters are laminated pouches mostly we have seen the laminated pouches for retail brands we are packing in laminated pouches compare with hdp high density polyethylene laminated pouches having less permeability of gases like oxygen carbon dioxide and nitrogen and having less water vapor permeability so the, due to this good properties laminated pouches means two or more films are embedded together for example hdpe with polypropylenes or hdpe with polyterephthalene or hdpe with pvc so like that they will mix more than one film so it will give the good good uh, resistance then what about the secondary packaging material <coughs> secondary packaging material means nothing but five ply or seven ply three ply like that is there it's a fiber board or cardboard corrugated fiber board cotton which is made from cellulose from the plant sources various pouches primary packaging material manufacturing from the petroleum byproducts after distillation of petrol this is the byproduct polymers so from there they are manufacturing the polymers what is five ply or three ply seven ply just to have a look <clears throat> so this is the example of five ply cotton so this is the liner liner is nothing but craft paper most of the master cottons craft paper is white color and this is called flute and again liner and flute then finally liner inside this this is probably in brown color so one two three four five so this is five ply so one liner and flute so in between they have to apply gum so most of the packaging metal industries so to paste in the each layer i mean to fix the liner craft paper with flute so they have to apply glue in between the both the layers so glue or gum it should be only non water based glue should be used mostly cheaply available starch is using as a glue or gum to paste in the layers <coughs> that may absorb the moisture during fastening the each ply so the manufacturer should apply non water based glue after fastening the glue then it has to go to the hot plate so the master cotton should expose in the hot plate once the master cotton properly dried then the master cottons it they again the, this will goes for the cutting section then automatically the cutters will cut after that the packaging metal manufacturer should ship the packaging material into the heat room for proper for further dry they should dry the master cottons in the heat room after hot plate if not properly dried master cottons then the bursting strength nothing tensile strength tensile strength is nothing but elongation strength so that is also won't meet as per our requirement for example 10 into 2 lbs master cottons means 10 into means 20 lbs for example 10 kg roughly net weight so at least the bursting strength should be 20 kg or 15 kg but elongation tensile strength also at least should be the double of the net quantity otherwise what will happen during loading the damage will occur or puncture the master cotton will gets puncture so this also leads to the formation of freezer burn so that is the one that is the one example so good quality packaging material and properly 
processed, manufactured, dried packaging material with adequate bursting strength, adequate tensile strength, then only we have to allow. Randomly, maybe quarterly or once in a six months, we have to send the packaging material to the external lab to ascertain the packaging metal strength as per our specific requirements or as per our retailer requirements whether the packaging material meets the bursting strength or tensile strength or not and whether the packaging material meets the certain qualities as required by the importer and randomly we have to visit the supplier's facility packaging metal manufacturer facility that's all about the video friends in our part 3 video we will discuss about seafood cold storage management thank you for watching my video if you like the video click the like symbol and subscribe my channel for regular updates bye